Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video, and in this series we're revisiting the ISS to Station 5 transfer. The big challenge in this mission is that you're over 63 degrees out of plane with the Station 5, and as I've said in so many videos, plane change equals expensive. So in order to make the trip from the ISS over to the Station 5, uh, you need to find a, a method of transferring that's at least, at least a little bit better than a brute force uh, main engine plane change. If you, if you try that while you're still in low Earth orbit, you're not going to have the fuel to make it over here. So we've attempted this uh, flight once before. We succeeded by raising our orbit way out into space. But in this one, in this, in this attempt, instead of doing that, we're lowering our orbit down into the atmosphere so that we can use the dynamic pressure to steer ourselves into plane with the Station 5. We've already gained over 50 degrees of plane change by doing this, and we are currently on our fifth and final pass to get the last little bit of plane change that we need. So let's go ahead and switch camera views here and jump back into it. Okay, let me unpause so we can get into the action right away. So I ended the last video where we had just passed the node and we're now climbing back out. So we're still working on pass number five, but we're mostly done with it. And as you can see, our relative inclination is all the way down to 6.5. So we've almost, what is that, 57 degrees now that we've improved. And uh, yeah, we want to get you know, as much benefit out of this pass as we possibly can, but I'm pretty sure the numbers are going to work out where whatever, whatever we have left after this pass is probably not going to be worth making another trip around and going through the atmosphere yet again but we will see we'll see how we'll see how it ends up so i have a little bit of main engine going just to keep our orbit from decaying and currently we're at uh, 220 on our apa that's with the main engine burning just a little bit and our, we're climbing out we're a little bit we're, we're several degrees past the node now so i'm gonna go ahead and rotate even more just to increase the rate at which we're climbing out. Although it is tempting to try to stay down in the atmosphere a little bit just to get even more improvement on the relative inclination, but uh, but I, I think there's I think there's a limit. Go ahead and kill the main engine and go ahead and let the drag of the atmosphere decay our orbit a little bit. And uh, when we get just a little bit lower here. We'll go ahead and turn the engine back on. So I was hoping we would do a little bit better than that, but uh, yeah, we'll see. It looks like we're going to be under five degrees. So hmm, it might possibly be worth coming back through. We will do the. We will run the numbers when we're done here and see what happen, See how they pan out. Because <laughs> we have a few options. Obviously, we don't have to do the the plane change while we're here low we certainly wouldn't want to do that because at the very least we know we're going to be raising our orbit out to uh, 2,000 kilometers so potentially we could raise our orbit out to 2,000 kilometers and then do the plane change and I'm thinking that will be cheaper than coming back through the atmosphere. Apoapsis is starting to drop a little bit so just in case we think we might end up doing this again. We want to make sure that we keep our apoapsis set at the point that we've been doing previously, just in case, which is about 260, usually around 95 kilometers. We kill the engines when we're at apoapsis about 260, and that's been working out for us, you know, pass after pass after pass. So we're just going to keep doing that. <clears throat> So about 260, so around 270, we'll kill the engines because we'll be close to that point. Because we'll probably, yeah, we'll probably still get just a little bit of drag here. So about 4.68, coming down just a little bit more. So I'm thinking around 4.5 degrees, and probably 4.65 is about how much correction we're going to have left after this pass. And yeah, we'll... Uh, We've got a reasonable estimate of what it costs to do this, somewhere between 330 on the low end and 475 on the high end. So that gives us a range to know. And I'm pretty sure 
can't say without looking, but I, I feel like at the very least raising our orbit out to 2,000 kilometers and then doing the plane change would have to be cheaper than making another pass through the atmosphere. That's what my instinct tells me. Let's go ahead and warp time forward. Let's get about halfway in between the nodes like we've been doing. About right here and let's come out of time warp and let's see how our numbers are looking so we'll bring up burn time and we have DV plus RCS and we're at 6888 so that's nice and easy 6888 and 461 so let's uh, switch to our calculator here and punch in our numbers so DV remaining after the fifth pass was 6888 I think that's the most expensive one so far and the relative inclination is 4.61, but I, that's also the most gain we've gotten. So let me actually take a look at that first. 18.97 minus 4.61. Yeah, that's more gain than we've got. So it seems, it seems like the closer in plane you get, the better your gains get. All right, let's uh, copy this down and see how much this maneuver cost us. I forgot to put a dollar sign on that one, so let me do that again. And minus C64, and then mm, subtract out 6888. So yeah, that, that one cost us 558, but we also got the most gain out of it. Don't necessarily think it's the best ratio. I still feel like this one was the best ratio. 12.88 gain for 349. All right, and let's see how much uh, total um, plane change we've gotten so far. So we're going to add in plus 14.36. And yeah, I could just add a D64 to 14.36, but I didn't do that. So 61.7. That doesn't add up because we're still 4.61 degrees out of plane. So something seems a bit off there because we started out at 63. So anyway, that's uh, that's how we're that's how we're looking at the moment. So now let's try to figure out you know what what our options are for plane change. So let me go to this view for a moment. So at the very least, we're going to circularize our orbit. So at the very least, we're going to be at, say, 266.9 by 266.9. So if we if we figure that, you know, at the very least, 266.9 by 266.9. And let's just be stupid for a second. And let's say we're going to do the plane change at this point. So that would cost 623. We know for sure we can beat that with uh, using the atmosphere, but we're we're not going to do that. We're going to, at the very least, raise one side of our orbit. So, let's say that we raise one side of our orbit. Uh, let's be a little conservative and let's say 1900. Wow, really? Still 527 to align. Um, that's surprising. I thought it would be cheaper than that. And what if we brought up both sides? Okay, uh, that surprises me. I really thought we would be better off doing it. So this this is pretty conclusive, though. I mean, well, 558 is the worst it's ever been. And interestingly enough, that's exactly what it costs here. So I feel like we're better off doing a sixth pass. The only thing about the sixth pass would be that we don't want to spend very much time in the atmosphere. We want to get in and out. Hmm. There, there's another thing to, to consider is that if we if we uh, if we raise our orbit at the same time we do the plane change, that would probably be the cheapest overall. But I don't honestly know how to calculate that because I don't know how to calculate the the burn angle uh, Dimitri gave me a formula for it but I haven't worked it out yet um, 
Hmm. I'm just thinking about what I want to do now because the problem is with timing timing that little amount of time in the atmosphere and if we get it if, and obviously we don't want to overcompensate but getting four and a half degrees is not going to take very long so we really want to enter the atmosphere like really really close to the node instead of instead of arriving ahead of it so I think what that means is that we want to have an apoapsis a bit higher than what we've been doing okay so this is going to be a little experimental but I feel like the numbers are telling me that we need to do another pass through the atmosphere so let us do what we've been doing all right so let's uh let's warp time forward let's get closer to the apoapsis we're coming up on that point and let's get our vessel rotated in the way it needs to be rotated all right so the first thing i want to do let me hmm. Let me rotate the outward because we want to move our we want to move our time to the apoapsis out. We know that, and we need to raise our periapsis. Okay, so go ahead and start burning. Okay, periapsis is coming up. Time to the apoapsis is going out, so everything is going in the direction that we want it to go in. Rate is not going up. Okay, periapsis is going up faster than time to the apoapsis, so I'm going to go a bit outward. Probably about right in this range. Okay, apoapsis time is three. I'm going to, start, I'm going to have to start going inward now. A little bit more inward, so 500. Okay, got to watch my times. I'm going to have to kill... So 5.30, so a little bit more on the main engine. And all of this will be part of pass 6. It's cost, oh crud, I overshot. That's okay, it's not by a huge amount, but that is inefficient, so that's unfortunate. Alright, so... And that might actually not even be the worst thing, because... That means that we will be arriving, we'll be going into the atmosphere a bit later. So that might actually be that might actually be a good thing. In fact, it might be a good a good enough thing that we would even want to go farther out. And that's actually what I'm thinking. Because I want to arrive really, really close to the ascending node, not over here, but so I'm gonna experiment a little bit, living a bit dangerous here. I'm gonna go a bit more outward. I'm going to bring up that time just a little bit more. And that's also bringing up my periapsis. Okay, but I don't want to go too much with it, so let me roll, let me head back towards proper prograde so that my time to the apoapsis isn't really going up. Okay. Okay, so we're so yeah the idea is just that since we don't need to spend much time in the atmosphere on the next pass i want to arrive at 75 kilometers like you know much much closer to the node all right now let's bring up our periapsis to 75. okay go with that all right, now let's uh, rinse and repeat here. Let's uh, warp time forward. We'll go 1,000 until we're farther down. We, as we get further along, we move faster and faster, so we need to watch our time warp. And then at 120, come out of time warp. Uh, we'll go for 10 and let ourselves settle into proper prograde.
Okay, so we're almost at proper prograde. About there. Kill rotation. And okay, let's warp time forward. Now we have to be really careful with this pass. Because we just this is gonna go fast. This uh, last little bit of plane alignment. So we do not want to get any lower than we have to be, and we want to be we, we want to be able to climb back out at a moment's notice. Yeah, I f in fact, I feel like Rotation. I feel like I could have pushed my time to the uh, my apoapsis time. I could have pushed it out quite a bit farther. I'm a little worried about the time to the node. It's counting down so slowly that I think I, I think I, I think I yeah I should have offset that time a lot more. So this pass feels like a little bit of a mistake, but we're down we've we've gotten more than a degree of change and we'll, we'll get everything that we can get out of this pass and then obviously we're done but we're I'm really gonna watch my see now the time to the notes counting up which means it's going to get farther and farther and farther ahead of me so so on this last pass, I really definitely should have made sure that my time to the apoapsis was um, quite a bit farther ahead. And it makes perfect sense now that I'm thinking about it, but that's okay. I, I, th I think we'll still get enough gain out of this pass that it will have been worth it overall. Hopefully. Okay, so... A little bit of time warp. So a little bit more time warp. All right, now we're going to start rolling out because the time of the node is increasing quite fast, and we're getting pretty close to 75 kilometers. So, and so what's going to end up happening is that this line is going to swing around, and our position is going to become perpendicular. And since the time of the node is increasing eventually it's going to get to a point where everything's going to flip and if we're in the orientation that we're in now we're actually going to lose benefit but look at that we're i think this was still worth it okay now one last thing i'm going to do here really soon is i'm going to turn on the apa apu for now i'm going to leave it on and where, see this is almost perpendicular so it's getting ready to flip so I'm gonna take out the elevator trim now and we're just gonna have about a half of a degree or something left when this is all said and done and we'll take we'll plan on taking care of that as part of our so you can see our rates almost zero and this is almost perpendicular, which means if we continue in this orientation, the rate's going to flip. So let's plan on climbing out now. In fact, we should have uh, should have climbed out a bit sooner, actually. Okay, so the other thing I want to do is uh, control M. Nope, not control M, all M. Whatever it is, I think it's all M for center of gravity shift to zero that out. So I'm just zeroing everything back out. Now, let's, uh, now we just want to climb out. So pretty much wings level with the atmosphere. And a bit of main engine. And let me turn the APU back off, if I didn't already. Okay, so now effectively we're almost like going into orbit at this point. <laughs> So now I am not, uh, well, let me think about this. Let me check my target station five, like where am I at? So I'm, 
because I was thinking I could raise my apoapsis out at this point, but if I want to catch up to it fairly quickly, I should probably stay down fairly low. You know, something like a normal orbital altitude of 200 kilometers or 300 kilometers. Let's go for... Let's go for 200 kilometers for now. Actually, we'll overshoot that a little bit because we're still down the atmosphere by a bit. So we'll go with uh, we'll go with 300 for here. Okay, so we're going to make that our current target altitude, knowing that it's going to decay a little bit as we uh, climb through the atmosphere here a little bit. But let's make sure that our rate is not positive, like it is now, and let's uh, rotate at least enough so that with whatever little bit of traces of gas we have, you know, we don't mess up our relative inclination. Okay, so that's going to complete pass number six. So let me go ahead and switch camera views here. And that's going to be the end of this part. And when we come back in the next part, we'll take a look at how we did. Uh, this pass is probably going to be more expensive than the previous ones, but we had some slightly different things going on. So uh, that's going to end this part. Leave a like, leave a comment, and I'll see you in the next part.